After meeting a woman impervious to his devilish charms, a notorious womanizer does everything he can to win her affection. Somewhere in Italy, an old man is writing his memoir. He remembers he'd forgotten to write about Francesca, but remarks that it isn't his story to tell. Zanetta Farusi leaves her child, Giacomo Casanova, under the care of his grandmother and promises to return for him in the future. After she departs, the old woman states that his mother isn't at fault because heat for love runs in their family. By 1753, Casanova had become a known womanizer throughout Venice, and his adventures are chronicled in theaters around the city. One day, Casanova makes love with a novice nun from a special order, when they're interrupted by one of the sisters, who informs him that the Inquisition has come to arrest him. Casanova flees the convent and bolts to the roof, while the nuns clamor for him to never forget them. The Inquisition then discovers a shoe in the nun's room and chases after him. However, Casanova escapes by jumping across buildings and into a university. University. He disguises himself and attends an open discussion where they're currently debating about women's rights to education. One of the members of the opposition, Dr. Giordano de Padua, reveals himself to be a woman. She presents her side with the analogy of a small hot air balloon, likening the ballast to men holding women back from reaching their potential. Her opponent tries to counter her, but the woman argues that the philosopher, Bernardo Guardi, understands women more than any man in the hall. The Inquisition catches up to Casanova and he jumps onto the podium but unfortunately gets captured. Later, the nun confesses to Casanova seducing her, and the lead inquisitor, Father D'Alfonso, sentences the latter to death by hanging. The city's ruler, the Dodge, arrives and talks D'Alfonso out of executing Casanova. This changes D'Alfonso's mind, playing along that it was a case of mistaken identity, and dismisses Casanova. Later, the Dodge tells Casanova not to abuse their friendship because the church is already on his case, for allowing Venice to thrive as a pleasure city. The Dodge plans to banish him, but Casanova is adamant about staying because he still awaits his mother's return. The ruler considers this and orders him to find a respectable wife before Carnival, threatening to banish him if he doesn't comply. Casanova returns to his house to inform his manservant, Lupo Salvato, of the news. Later, the pair go outside and scout for potential wives for Casanova. Then, the womanizer spots a beautiful woman by her window, Victoria. From the window across Victoria's, Giovanni Bruni stares longingly at the woman. His sister, Francesca, Francesca urges him to talk to her when their mother, Andrea, arrives to chastise her daughter over her stint at the university. Giovanni defends his sister's actions, but Andrea reminds Francesca that she is to marry Paprizio in a union arranged by her late father to free them of debt. However, Francesca is vehemently against it, much to Andrea's dismay. When their mother leaves, Giovanni muses that Francesca has a secret lover, while she scoffs at. He then returns to gaze at Victoria when he spots Casanova and Lupo heading inside her house. Later, Casanova speaks with Victoria's father, Signor Donato, first famously chased daughter's hand in marriage, and gifts him a box for the dowry. However, the latter refuses due to the former's notorious reputation. Meanwhile, an elated Victoria observes them behind a birdcage, unconsciously breaking it from her excitement. She overhears her father's answer, quickly approaches the men, and pleads for her father to say yes. Casanova hears this and slides the box toward them, sealing the deal. Afterward, Giovanni sees Casanova kissing Victoria's hand as he exits the house. Furious for stealing Victoria from him, Giovanni runs to Casanova and throws his glove at him, officially challenging him to a duel at dawn in San Cremori. Annoyed, the womanizer gives his manservant's name in response to get Giovanni to back off. Lupo is aghast that Casanova pitted him against the man, but his employer responds that it's because the manservant was the one who threw the glove back. Later, Francesca finds her brother practicing his parry. Elsewhere, after watching Lupo train, Casanova suggests he fight in his stead. At dawn, Casanova and Lupo Lupo arrive at San Cremori, where they find Giovanni, Francesca, and the judge to oversee their duel. They don their masks, then Giovanni rushes to attack Casanova and quickly overwhelms him. Casanova shoves Lupo at Giovanni to hinder him when his manservant realizes something is off. Lupo takes off Francesca's mask, revealing Giovanni. Shocked, Casanova removes his opponent's mask, revealing that it was Francesca fighting him this whole time. As the group leaves, Francesca talks to the womanizer about her hatred of Casanova, believing the man before for her to be Lupo. She then claims she'll only give herself to a man who has proven himself first, rendering Casanova silent. Soon they part ways, and Casanova can't stop thinking about her, even when they arrive home. He then tells Lupo that he's made a mistake of choosing Victoria, so they rush outside to search for Francesca. Later, they find Francesca at the market, where they overhear that she's engaged. 
He sees her entering the library and goes to follow her, but bumps into Andrea and Giovanni. Giovanni still sulks over Victoria's engagement to Casanova. The womanizer, who's currently pretending to be Lupo, advises him on what he should do to be more desirable to women. Casanova tries to pry information about Francesca, so Giovanni reveals that she's never met her fiancé, and he suspects his sister has a secret lover due to her frequent clandestine meetings. They spot her leaving the library, and Casanova and Lupo follow her. However, they run into Signor Donato and Victoria, with the latter breaking a portion of the bridge due to her excitement. Her father warns him of no funny business before the wedding and drags his daughter away. The pair then see Francesca entering a building, convincing Casanova that she does have a secret lover. At the Inquisitor's office, Father D'Alfonso receives 127 complaints against Casanova. Sometime after Francesca exits the building, Casanova and Lupo head inside, where they find a man sleeping in the corner, confirming their suspicions. They also find Bernardo Guardi's feminist works, and Casanova copies some of it. Elsewhere, Francesca laments to Andrea about her engagement, stating she doesn't want a loveless marriage. However, her mother reminds her that their union will save them from debt, and tells her to think about it. The next morning, Casanova sees Francesca at the church, where he learns she's preparing herself for marriage. Unbeknownst to the pair, Father D'Alfonso overhears them. The womanizer follows her outside, where they argue about Casanova's promiscuity, but he renders her speechless by quoting one of of Gordy's works. Francesca quickly leaves and goes back home to scribble something down. She then goes back to the building and confronts the sleeping man from the day before, Bernardo Guardi, because Casanova had managed to read her latest unpublished manuscript. It's revealed that she's the real author and is only using the man's name as a front. However, Guardi claims he saw no one come in, so Francesca orders him to send an additional page to the printing press. When Guardi leaves, Casanova and Lupo follow him. Meanwhile, D'Alfonso also trails behind. The pair enter the publication house, where Casanova reads her latest chapter about a pig being an intelligent woman's pet of choice. Later, Francesca sees Casanova arriving at her house with a pet pig. Her maidservant refuses to let him in, but gladly takes the pig. Nearby, D'Alfonso watches the events unfold. Francesca then sends the pig to Guardi, with a note stating that his services are no longer required. Later, Lupo informs Casanova that Francesca's wealthy fiancé, Petro Paprizio, is arriving at noon. Casanova remembers his debts and asks his manservant to prepare his second best suit. Soon, Petro Paprizio disembarks from his barge carrying lard, and orders the Coast Guard to put up his posters around Venice. Nearby, D'Alfonso takes note of his arrival. Then, Casanova approaches Paprizio and pretends to be a manservant for the Bruni family. He lies that the hotel the merchant booked is closed and persuades the merchant to stay at his house instead. Elsewhere, Bishop Pucci arrives at Alfonso's office, where he informs the head inquisitor that he has come to replace him. Pucci elaborates that the Pope is furious at their lack of progress in capturing Casanova, and has reassigned him to missionary work in the equatorial region. Meanwhile, Paprizio pays Casanova 1,600 lira to stay at the villa, clearing the latter's debts. Confused after studying D'Alfonso's notes, but she realizes they must do the investigation themselves. As Paprizio prepares to bathe, Casanova and Lupo snoop through his belongings. The merchant interrupts to show them a portrait of himself that he plans to give to Francesca. However, he's hurt when Lupo doesn't recognize him and returns to the tub. Casanova then finds a pamphlet by Guardi in his chest and discovers that Francesca had given it to him. Paprizio's manservant, Fulvio, returns to inform his master that the Brunis have requested him for tea. Paprizio admits he's anxious to meet Francesca and hopes she won't be disappointed with his appearance. Afterward, Casanova lies that he's actually Bernardo Guardi, and Paprizio, a big fan of the author, begs the former to transform him. Casanova accepts and instructs the merchant he must be confined to the villa for the process. He then tells Paprizio he'll relay his postponement to the Brunis. Elsewhere, Giovanni stares longingly at Victoria from the window, when Andrea orders him to prepare for Paprizio's arrival. Casanova arrives and proclaims he's the real Paprizio, much to Francesca's horror. Casanova then shares that he grew tired of the women back in Genoa, as they were only after his money and lard business. He says the reason he kept his real identity from her was to ensure Francesca wasn't in love with anyone else. However, Francesca doesn't buy it and is about to walk away when Casanova presents her with the pamphlet she had gifted Paprizio. Shocked, Francesca realizes that she was wrong the whole time. Suddenly, Pucci arrives and Francesca questions the chief inquisitor's presence in Venice. He informs them that the Pope has sent him to deal with the city's rampant morality problems. However, Francesca continues to press him when Casanova interrupts them, stating his fiancée only wants to learn more about heresy from the inquisitor. Pucci elaborates that whatever affronts the church is heresy like Guardi's work, and he plans to wipe him out. Alarmed, Francesca flees, but Casanova stops her to ask her to the carnival ball. 
Francesca accepts and runs to Gordy's house, where she sees the man getting arrested. Francesca then goes to the publishing house to inform the publisher to delay the release of her latest book, but he says they already printed it. Later, Casanova goes to a factory to prepare a canvas for the ball. He returns home, where he discovers Lupo had strapped Paprizio onto the table and smeared lard over his body for his transformation. Paprizio asks for a mirror and is delighted at the process. Casanova assures the merchant he'll handle his affairs with his fiancée and orders him to continue with his treatment. When Casanova heads back out, he's captured by the Inquisition. Elsewhere, Guardi is being tortured over Francesca's works while Pucci and Casanova listen from another room. The Inquisitor, who believes the latter is Paprizio, reveals he came to Venice to execute the womanizer and questions him about Casanova. Pucci then asks for help searching for him, promising to offer him the Vatican's hoard of lard, to which he agrees. Pucci's manservant, Andolini, then arrives to notify his master that someone is using Guardi's name because he learned that the real Guardi is illiterate. Casanova quickly returns home and happily informs Lupo that Francesca has no secret lover. Suddenly, fireworks go off in the sky, signaling the start of Carnival. At Piazza San Marco, Pucci and Andolini search for Casanova by eavesdropping on people. Elsewhere, Giovanni spots Victoria sneaking out, then sees a harlot calling him and anxiously follows her to the brothel, where she reassures him it'll be alright. Casanova escorts Francesca to the ball when a footman informs him that Victoria is outside in the piazza waiting for him. Pucci watches the man fetching Victoria and becomes suspicious, telling Andolini they must search the womanizer's house for clues. Casanova then presents himself and his fiancée to the Dodge, who's pleased that the former came through with his promise. Casanova leads her to the dining hall when Victoria pleads that they must make love now. Casanova tells her to wait, but Victoria spots Donato entering the room, searching for her. Victoria hides under the table, puzzling her fiancé with her actions. Suddenly, she starts fondling him from below. All of a sudden, Andrea, Francesca, and Donato join Casanova's table. But Victoria doesn't stop what she's doing. The unaware group notices the table moving so much and tries to check under it, just as a pig comes running out. Shocked, Casanova turns and sees Victoria escaping. Lupo sees Pucci arriving at the estate and quickly jumps into the canal. Meanwhile, the Inquisitor finds Paprizio in Casanova's house and orders Andolini to arrest him. Later, Pucci tortures Paprizio, believing him to be Casanova. However, a bound Fulvio hands Pucci a flyer of Paprizio's business, and the latter realizes he's the real lard merchant. The Inquisitor then concludes that Guardi and Casanova are the same person, and gathers his men. Concurrently, Casanova spots Victoria in the crowd and persuades Donato to take her home. The Dodge and the Inquisitor meet, with the latter informing the former he's come to arrest Casanova. The Dodge argues that the womanizer has changed his ways and asserts he's under his protection. However, Pucci threatens to expose him to the church if he intervenes. During the dance, Paprizio publicly announces himself and Andrea is instantly smitten. They are both drawn to each other, but Andrea snaps out of it, informing him that she's his future mother-in-law. Pucci goes up to her and impolitely asks where Francesca is. When Paprizio chokes him, offended by the Inquisitor's rude interruption, Pucci immediately leaves while Andrea stares at the merchant lovingly. Meanwhile, Casanova finds Francesca in the courtyard and leads her starry-eyed across the canal to ride a hot air balloon. Meanwhile, the people below are shocked at the floating contraption and Pucci calling it witchcraft. Victoria is horrified to see Casanova with Francesca and wails in pain. Andrea sees her daughter looking happily in love and understands that the engagement is off. Paprizio learns he's a free man and they hold hands. Above, Casanova admits that he knows Francesca is the real Bernardo Guardi, stating he'd known after seeing her debate at the university, and proclaims his love for her. Francesca is surprised that he attended it when she suddenly sees a massive poster of Paprizio's real face on a building. Caught red-handed, Casanova reveals his true identity, angering Francesca. She turns the burner off and the hot air balloon quickly descends on onto the square. Pucci arrives to arrest Casanova, believing him to be Bernardo Guardi. Francesca tries to protest, but Casanova accepts the charges to save her and is led away by the guards. At the square, a depressed Lupo retrieves the hot air balloon canvas. Later, Victoria sees Pucci and she lies that Casanova had stolen her innocence and that she's willing to testify against him. However, Victoria is worried about her reputation, so Pucci promises that the church will return her dignity to her. At the brothel, Giovanni enjoys his tryst with three women. The next morning, Francesca is glumly thinking about Casanova when she sees her mother and Paprizio kissing by the canal. She then realizes something and writes it down. Elsewhere, Victoria spots Giovanni being swarmed by harlots while exiting the brothel and recognizes him as the boy from the window. Flustered, he introduces himself and admits he's loved her for years. 
Victoria then asks why he never told her, and he smiles. Soon, Casanova's trial begins, and Francesca comes as Giordano de Padua to defend the former. She proclaims that he's only pretending to be Bernardo Guardi to protect her, and confesses that she's the real author. The Dodge is ecstatic about his friend's innocence and orders to release him, when Pucci stops him, as he still committed other crimes. The Inquisitor tries to make Victoria testify, but she admits her accusation was a lie. However, Pucci still has 127 testimonies against Casanova, and sentences both him and Francesca to death. Later, in Piazza San Marco, Casanova and Francesca are sent to the gallows to be hanged. However, as Pucci is about to give the signal, Cardinal La Presta and his veiled nurse arrive. The Cardinal then announces that the Pope has given a papal pardon for all the prisoners who were to be executed on that day, because it's the Pope's birthday and orders to free the pair, much to Pucci's dismay. The Cardinal then invites the two of them to his coach, when his nurse lifts her veil, revealing herself to be Casanova's estranged mother, who is returned for him. She apologizes for her delay and introduces her husband, Tito, who's been acting as the cardinal. Tito explains that they're a theater troupe who quickly traveled to Venice to rescue him. All of a sudden, a child notices the wet paint on the coach, blowing their cover. The real Cardinal La Presta suddenly arrives, and Pucci orders his men to arrest them. The imposters flee using the troop's coach and are about to crash into the canal when Lupo uses his feet as brakes. The Inquisition catches up to them in a square, and Casanova, Francesca, Giovanni, and Victoria fight them off. They then head to Perpizio's barge, where Donato grabs Victoria, as he won't allow her to go. Perpizio then sees his mast has no sails, and Lupo uses the canvas from Casanova's hot air balloon as a replacement. Casanova opts to stay behind because they won't stop looking for him, when Giovanni suggests he pretend to be him. He agrees, and Lupo also disembarks, claiming he belongs in Venice, promising to take care of Giovanni. The barge then sails away, and Pucci's men struggle to chase after them. Later, Zanetta and Casanova finally reunite with his mother fulfilling her promise. Soon, Giovanni and Victoria marry, while the former continues Casanova's legendary womanizing. Elsewhere, the real Casanova spends the rest of his life as a traveling theater actor, along with his mother, Tito, and Francesca. Years later, it is revealed that the old man writing the memoir of Casanova's many adventures is Giovanni. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.